Here's Candy with the Candy Shop Show on the Diamond Network. We've got lots of fun, exciting, happy things to talk about as we uh, envision a wonderful future with our galactic friends. I have two fantastic guest speakers this evening from the Toronto area and beyond. So uh, let's get started with the July 6th edition 2016 of the Candy Shop Show. Okay, Uh, welcome to the Diamond Network. Be sure and check all our shows out at the YouTube channel, Diamond Forever Channel. Okay, Uh, let me take the lid off the candy jar treats and and let's look at some current events. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're surprised that uh, uh, Hillary got exonerated yesterday, but a but, uh, uh, few hours later, WikiLeaks were so upset they released 1,200 emails that they had uh, been able to take off of her server that were classified mostly as, uh, as, as uh, classified, top secret kind of things, and uh, you, you can just hear all the news and the backlash against the uh, FBI director and L- Loretta, the pros- the attorney general. There, uh, some ET friends have said that uh, that that they were uh, listening in on the conversation between Bill Clinton and Loretta when he uh, barged in on her plane, and that indeed he did threaten her if. Uh, if she didn't uh, exonerate Hillary, so uh, but she's going to be called in apparently to by the Republicans in the Congress and have to swear under oath, and so that will make her a criminal if she lies about the conversation between her and Bill Clinton. Well, uh, you know it's happy news that 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 the cabal and some of these these evil ones are are. Um, being exposed and being taken down by the Galactics. We um, we heard Monday night about the astrology that's so special right now and that there are four different uh, uh, conjunctions with the, um, the planets and the sun and the moon going on right now and how rare it is to have four planets conjuncting at the same time, and uh, Cynthia shared about the gamma rays coming in and and how our DNA could really change. And uh, so um, I was was looking at the, the sky the next day after Cynthia shared about this, and it just seemed like the blue sky was was radiant. It, it just seemed like it was sparkly blue. It, it was more blue than than usual, and so so that was good. They, they talked about how there was uh, less of a problem with chemtrails, and that if there are chemtrails, that the poison has been for the most part taken out. And sure enough, around my home in in Missouri, there are less chemtrails. But driving through Ohio today, I did see uh, some chemtrail activity, but there were a lot of, of natural clouds, or were those clouds cloaking devices for our UFO friends? Who knows? Who knows? I uh, I think we we want to remember to keep on meditating and and just expect and visualize more 
and more uh, uh, psychic abilities, telepathy abilities, abilities, as Cynthia was saying, uh, devices that the galactics are sharing uh, so that we, the technology, so that we can see in the past, present, and future uh, all at once. As these, uh, as the planets are uh, merging, and it's just been um, wonderful with Christopher, Steve, and Jacobs to uh, channel entities from um, fifteen different dimensions. So we are we are looking forward to uh, Christopher returning to our show in August, and um, I think that that gives you a quick overview. We're going to have a shorter show this evening about some of the items in the candy jar treats. So I'll put the lid back on, and I'll ask my audience whether you're here live or listening later on YouTube. Um, As we say the law of one, just take a deep breath and relax and visualize your highest light possible for a wonderful future. Just like Benjamin Fulford talks about our gold back currency that's coming in and the wonderful things that should be happening soon since the Rothschilds have been given, um, the cabal has been given a deadline of July 10th to come to an agreement about the new global currencies. So just visualize all these things happening easily and without... Um, warfare and 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 bringing in a, a beautiful paradise here on the surface of the earth and healing Mother Nature. And I'd like to ask Sunny, our friend from California, to lead us in the to say the law of one. Thank you, Candy. Be happy too. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped. All are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only that which is and serves the highest good of all happen here and now and forever and throughout our whole beautiful planet as we undergo these transformative times. Within and without, I give thanks that this be done, and so it is. So be it. So be it. Yes. Thank you, Sunny. Quite well, welcome. I promised some exciting uh, speakers, and we want to invite all our galactic friends, and we want to invite returning from the Toronto area, Mark Sorensen. Mark, how are you? I'm very good tonight, Candy. It's a pleasure to be on board once again with you on the show. Well, thank you, and I think that this is uh, your fourth in a series with the Candy Shop Show. Absolutely, it is. And uh, I have a very interesting guest along with me tonight, and it's uh, very interesting that you speak of these clouds that have uh, some shapes that may be concealing some of our galactic friends and their ships up there. Uh, It brings me back to... uh, Last month, we had in the Toronto area, GTA, our first Canadian alien cosmic expose, and we had many speakers there from all over the world. And uh, it was very interesting because there was uh, guest speakers uh, who have been abducted by ETs, and there are speakers there who are out for disclosure from the States, from the UK, and from Canada. So it was a very interesting uh, weekend and event, so to say. Um, At the event, I had the privilege to bring my colleague along, who I'm going to introduce shortly. And we had the uh, privilege of being a surprise guest speaker, so to say, on the first evening. And... uh, I don't think the audience was quite prepared for what uh, we did. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to introduce Hildegard Van Boutes. And uh, if I don't say it right, Hildegard, please say so. Okay. 
So uh, bringing Hildegard on board uh, to uh, share her story, and then we'll uh, share, maybe she can share a little bit about how we met. And uh, she has some very exciting uh, insights as a walk-in, as an Andromedan walk-in uh, some 25 years ago. And so she has a story to tell with that. And then, of course, we'll share some very interesting uh, perspectives as we connect with one of her members from her space shuttle that she came here on. And so we'll begin, and I introduce Hildegard. Hildegard? Well, that's wonderful. Hildegard. That's wonderful, Mark. And, yes, uh, we want to hear more about uh, Andromedans and the, and the others. Uh, Hildegard, uh, welcome to the Candy Shop Show. Well, thank you so very much for the lovely introduction, Mark, and thank you for having me, Candy. It's so nice to be here. What a great name for a show, the Candy Show. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, my story is not that I came on a space shuttle. However, I had this typical middle-class, stay-at-home life here at some point in the west end of Toronto, and uh, the body fell apart, literally. I went from 200 pounds with a child to a little under 100 without trying and suffered many painting spells. Um, the medical system couldn't deal with it. They didn't know what caused it. And during these times when the body seemingly fell apart underneath me, I was in this space of iridescent light. I became aware that I had, I was conscious, I could think, I could hear, I could communicate, yet trying to cover my eyes from the blinding light, I realized, oh my God, I have no body. So at that moment in time, I didn't really know what to think. My first thought was, oh great, no more doctors, no more medication. No more of all of this, well, we can't figure anything out, what's wrong with your body. And uh, then I thought, oh, no, 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 I can't be dead. I have three little children. No way, everything has to stop, I have to go back. And then in that moment, I seemingly must have communicated that to an intelligence that was in that light. And the sooner I had I thought I wanted to go there, I felt this very warm, loving embrace if you know how soft cashmere sweaters are, to me this is the the term now I like to use. It was softer than many cashmere sweaters could feel. And I had a conversation. The words exactly I can't remember, but I felt agreeable. And then I got another hug, and off I was, and I would wake up in the back office of a store or in some stranger's living room or in an ambulance or in a hospital bed. And um, then I, they would ask me, the, the attending physicians, what happened, where were you? And then I would go and say, well, I'm a walking from Andromeda. I'm a seven-dimensional consciousness scientist, and I've taken on the energy exchange with a three-dimensional body, and I'm here to, you know, facilitate higher consciousness on this planet. And something along those lines, and then, of course, you can very well imagine the reaction of the medical expert. So, well, let's put her on some antidepressants or, you know, give her some drugs. And it's understandable, you know, because what I was sharing was not necessarily in the frame of reference that our medical system here in Canada operates in. And um, so it took a while to integrate that new energy, and it happened many, many times, three, four, five times. And the first time was when I saw the light. The next time I found myself lying on a table. I had apparently some light body. It looked like I had a physical body, but again, previously I'd seen the body lying somewhere else. And then there were four people on the right, four people on the left, two at the, by the feet and two by the head. And these people had the skin of a baby's bum. There was not a wrinkle. I had to tell how old they were. Maybe looked like a 28 or 30-year-old. The skin was incredibly pure white, I might say, like a sheer, beautiful 
almost translucent kind of white. And the hair color was grayish, platinum, golden. It's hard to say. I would say silvery white. And their eyes were a little bit almond shaped, but bigger than ours. Not the typical kind of ET eyes that you see all over the internet. Smaller than the eyes of what you what you might have seen as a gray, but yet maybe two three times bigger than our eyes. And I was telepathically being told that I needed to do some work on my system, so that as I was going into the three dimension, third dimension, which is carbon based body, they would have to step my frequency down, and then as I was becoming more acquainted with the third dimensional body, then they would, in due time, bring me up to speed and bring my energies up again. And yeah, so that was a challenge, because when I came back from some of those painting spells, I didn't recognize myself, I didn't recognize the body, I didn't recognize my my clothes, couldn't recognize the husband I was living with, the three children, the home environment that I'd lived in for over 10 years. And so then I felt like I am stuck in this body and I'm screaming, saying, somebody, please help me. What is? What are you doing to me? And then there was a lady who came in and she called herself Ashta Asina and she said, okay, You chose this experience. You will learn how to function in this 3D body, not to worry. I'll explain to you everything that you need to know. And then the children came, come, Mom, what's for dinner? Or so-and-so is taking my toy. And in my head would go, so now what am I going to do? So this lady was guiding me for about two and a half, three years. And then later on, Louis Ma came in. And Louis Ma is, Again, from Andromeda, Botas is apparently the home energy, or the, where the, the home of where this essence came in from. And apparently he was tasked to support 250 Andromedan uh, walk-ins such as myself because there seems to be a risk of people not wanting to stay in the body. And I've been going through... Uh, deep depression and thoughts of suicide and and Louis Ma would always say and that was coming out through my journal because what was around me didn't make any sense. The experts out there had no more answers. In my desperation, I took to journaling ferociously. So I would write down, oh my God, what's happening to me? It seems like there are two people in my head. What's going on? Why am I in this body? Who are these people? And then I would write things down, and in the journaling, answers would come. And because the people out there, to me, made no sense whatsoever, I began to just do what my journal book told me. And in Wow, wow. Yeah. God, this is very uh, exciting information and, and really uh, an amazing, incredible story. So, so uh, you were, like, uh, starting to to do some automatic writing in your in your book, that you, in yes. your journal. You were getting some answers to some of your questions, yes. right? Yes, because initially I had my left brain going a mile a minute, and on the other side there was this voice that was always calming, soft-spoken, not to worry, you're not alone, your task is right now, to raise these children to the light. And then, of course, my left brain would kick in and say, what do you mean, what do you mean, I don't understand any of this, this is not what I signed on for, you know what I mean? It was a <laughs> challenge, so, and of so course, the medical profession what, what would not you, respond you well, and I would tell them that. Yeah, the guard, were you both people? I mean, were you the children's mother as well as the walk-in, or just the walk-in? Well, what I discovered was that, well, this is at least my understanding, and that may not be true for everybody, but from what I understood, the essence, and I I see the world that way, the human body is animated by an essence, call it soul, software, whatever you want to call it, 
and the human being has only a certain amount of this soul essence incarnate in this body. The soul itself or that that energy is too vast to bring the entire vibration into one vessel. So I was told that we are simultaneously existing in many different dimensions and many different worlds and that the energy of, let me call it the soul, that animated this body called Hildegard up to the age of 33 has made a deal with the seven-dimensional Andromeda essence to switch places at that stage of age, right about 33. So that, in effect, the children were birthed by an aspect of that energy that is now in myself. The memories, the databases over time came back in. It's much like you're upgrading your computer. You put a new software on. It will take a little time to get everything up and running and the programs and the memories that you and the, the pictures or your emails or whatever you had on it before need to be transferred onto that new system. Does that make sense? It does. Now, this being that, that came to help you and explain things, was this a, a being in your head, or was it a physical being, a Canadian, that was a, another No, voice? it was just, it was, it was literally a voice inside of me. I hear a voice, and that I needed to learn to listen to because, Again, in the 3D world, if you go to the doctor and say you hear voices, guess what happens? You get labeled as, I don't know what all the the, the mental labels are, but people look at it as a mental disorder. And I Yes, DID, a disassociative identity disorder, and and they give you heavy medications. And and so... it's just, uh, uh, and and did you say that 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 is about the time that you were walking in that there were two hundred and fifty others from that realm that also became walking? Good question. This is what, and let me now share how Mark and I got together because I didn't really know that Louis Mar was the supervisor, so to speak, of all these walk-in projects pertaining to the Andromedans. I found that only out once Mark and I together talked to Louis Ma, and that really knocked my socks off because it's one thing to say, okay, I have to raise these children to the light, and you do what you're told because over time, I really created this deep connection with these little boys. And then I found it was absolutely needed. I I got that all these kids were also from different parts of the universe. And the understanding that I was gaining, I had to pass on to them right away. Or else they would be, quote, unquote, messed up, whatever that meant. And when I asked Rima, what does it mean? Messed up is because 3D kind of, let's call it, they would be significantly more stuck in the matrix. You know what I'm saying with that? I think so. Okay. So I just thought, this is for me, and and Luma said earlier, you raise these children to the light, and then comes a time when you have to tell your story. And I'm going, why would I do that? Well, because when you were in the light, you made a deal, you could go back to that life and you, had, you would be helped to raise these children and then you have a responsibility to share what you know. And i have forgotten about that part until I met Mark. Now here's how the story goes. There is an internet television station in Toronto called thatchannel.com and I produce shows for them on occasion. I had a lady from 
northern Ontario. It's about, you know, 300 kilometers north of here is where Mark is situated. And this lady knew Mark. And after I had interviewed her on the show on that channel, uh, she emailed me and said, I'd like you to get in touch with Mark. You know, you're such an interesting person. I think you and him could get along really well. You should make contact. So I contacted Mark, and the conversation went on and on, and we had a lot to talk about. And then as I was telling him that I'm just listening to uh, my guide, so to speak, from Andromeda, and he has been guiding me for 25 years. I have now children aged 30 down to 24 uh, 21, I have four children all together. And uh, Mark said, well, take me on the ship. And I'm going, huh? I never really consciously thought of going on that ship. And the ship that we are talking about is a little commuter thingy, you know, where there's five people and they're checking up on us, they support us, they make sure... You know, Hildegard, who was probably a very difficult character to keep in the body, beat me up, I don't want to be here, I destroyed this body. I was not very, not a good student, so to speak, right? And so then I never thought that I could take somebody else on a ship. But Mark said he could speak Andromedan. And I claimed not to be able to speak that language. In fact, I thought people from different worlds all do telepathy. What's the point of language? That's when Mark came in and he says, well, why don't you make a connection, introduce me to Louis Mar, and see what happens. And I said, well, you know, maybe that is all nonsense. Maybe that doesn't work. But anyway, why not try it? I'm open to it. So then I introduced him to Louis Mar, and then the two of them started to talk in a language I couldn't understand. And Louis Ma was simultaneously sending me the message to not strain my little mind because, you know, my system wasn't able to handle that yet. Now, Mark, do you want to take it from here? Okay, certainly. Will do, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, Candy, yeah, what I did was I, I spoke in Dromden with uh, Louis Ma, and we had an exchange of conversation. He was explaining to me that uh, Hildegard... Um, needed some assistance in opening up to the uh, language of Andromeda so that uh, she could relate the messages, she could understand, she can communicate with them in their own language, and that I would be able to assist her in doing that. And he also went on to explain that there was many things that I would be able to assist Hildegard with uh, in some of the 3D challenges she is having. And so because of my quantum holographic programming work that I do, uh, we were able to do uh, 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 several sessions and uh, assist Hildegard in opening up some of her beliefs, assist her in opening up uh, within, I think, three sessions, she was speaking the Andromedan language. Wonderful. And, uh, she was actually, she Wonderful. Was actually understanding yeah. what she was saying, yeah. Yeah, how long ago did you and she first uh, start communicating directly? Uh, I can tell you it was the first of May this year. Oh wow! And we had okay. And we and had yeah we had the interview uh, was uh, the first interview she did with me was uh, May thirteenth. Right, it, everything is just uh, speeding up. I mean, we here on the Diamond Network uh, did so much clearing in energy work, and we uh, we we neutralized the strangelet bomb and 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 things so that. Uh, so that the good the good ETs could come in and and not be uh, uh, fearful of being attacked and, and things and so I mean we 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 neutralized those bombs in, just in January and you know setting the mm -hmm. stage for the things that you know that you you and Hildegard have experienced and and so uh, it, it was is Hildegard uh, uh, originally an Andromedan? Do you want to? Well, from what I understand, in talking with Luamar and with her, that, yes, she came from the star uh, Boutes uh, in the Andromedan star system, and uh, she's a, a seventh-dimensional being, and, again, as she explained, she's a walk-in into the body 25-some years ago. And so um, in talking with Luamar, 
um, I had I had the ability to be able to sit with him and and he was very grateful that she had contacted me and they were very grateful to contact me too because I would be able to assist them in their walk-ins to uh, find them and help them in uh, moving forward and awakening uh, throughout the third dimension to rise with consciousness and then to help them uh, so that they can assist humanity in that way because Luimar gave me uh, the indication that they're not here to fix or change. Yeah. They're here to give their perspective. They're here to assist in, in giving us different uh, thought patterns and thinking about how things are to be. And so what I would like to do, uh, maybe this is a good time, is I'd like to connect with Lou and Mar, uh, through well, the ship. I think that that, that would be, be uh, wonderful, uh, Mark. And I know in the first three shows that you spoke uh, Pleiadian, and, and yes. have you spoken uh, Andromedan before May 2016? No, actually I haven't. And and it's very interesting because uh, recently, as you say, things are speeding up. I've been able to tune into people's frequencies and speak the language of their home planet, whether it be Draconian or Syrian or whether it be something local here, uh, a native language, Hopi or Lakota. And so I can communicate with these people just tuning into their frequencies now. And so this, too, is opening up for me. So what I would like to do to move forward to, to show you and to let the, the listeners hear is I'm going to speak Andromedan with Hildegard, and we're going to ask, uh, of course, Luamar to then come and join us telepathically f- through Hildegard, and he can give us his perspective of you know, some of the things we're talking about today and maybe some of the things that we can look for down the road into the future. And so, well, I would uh, like to indeed invite uh, Louis Marr uh, to the Candy Shop show, and and I don't know is uh, his core being on uh, the spaceship right now, or or is he in Canada? Yeah, he's so, on the show. No, how it works? It's not a physical being, and and something like actually, he told me when Mark and I were together with him. I, I didn't realize we were talking like for two and a half hours, but um, he was saying that. Okay, hang on a second. Let me go. Let me go back to something I wanted to say before. I was very doubtful that Mark could actually talk to Louis Mar because imagine we are physically apart. He is 400 kilometers away from where I am, and Louis Mar is on the ship. And I'm thinking, how can Mark be sure that he's talking to Louis Mar? And as we had this conversation, and and I made notes and did drawings, and Louis Mar explained to us also what would have to happen for people to actually physically get onto spaceships, and he was suggesting that in not too long a distant time, volunteers who are willing to be mentored off-planet will have the ability to do that, and the initial meeting will be in these little shuttle planes because the motherships are way too uh, far for us to travel to, and it, we are being trained by, the, by our handlers, quote-unquote, initially. I have physically that I know here in the 3D, I haven't taken my physical body with me on the ship consciously. I'm told that when I'm asleep, oftentimes they work on me and I'm on the ship. Now this time, Mark and I went together. And after the two and a half hours were over, I'm still in the back of my mind thinking, is it real? Like I have my doubts. And this is part of the reason why Mark is in my life now to help me work through that. So in the end of this gathering with Louis Ma, the first gathering we had together, I kind of wanted to trick Mark there to make sure that he is for real because we hadn't even met personally yet. We hadn't met each other. We were just talking on the phone. So I asked Mark, Mark, how can I be sure that you actually saw what I saw? Please describe the windows, if there were any, on the ship where we were. And Mark described a concave 
screen-like thing. It could be a screen or it could be a window or, you know, and I'm going, whoa, this guy's good. Like, I was shocked that he had the same vision or the same experience that I had. He described where the boardroom table was, what it looked like, the chairs, and everything. Well, and that's I'm, perfect. Yes, it sounds like you're both great uh, bilocators, uh, just like my friend Christopher, Steve, and Jacobs. And, and so many are, are, are beginning to get this, this skill to bilocate. And I congratulate well, you, Hildegard. Thank you. I'm a baby in this. Like, I am on wobbly legs here, admittedly, and I'm really grateful for Mark have come to help me. Louis Ma said that um, Mark speaks codes and helps codes because I asked them, do we really need to have that language? And he says, initially it is because you are to trigger each other. So when I'm speaking in this language, which is really not a spoken language from what I understand. It's more coding that helps those that are connected to me, and I'm here to support other walk-ins, among other things, uh, to wake up faster. And you alluded earlier to the speed with which things are going, and I'm still having trouble holding on to my hat because a lot of these things are happening really fast for me. You know what I mean? Well, okay, absolutely. So let's yes, let's do. Welcome to the Candy yeah. Shop Show. Yeah, so having said that, I'm just going to begin the dialogue with uh, with, uh, with Hildegard and uh, Louis Mar in uh, in the Andromeda language, and then Hildegard will telepathically connect with Louis Mar, and he'll come through her. Okay. Te tini i tikra da triono o kunta ha e te ke ina to triono o kunta ha kunta ha ta tene i ki ki ti ke ina ta triono o tuku kunta. Shina la na ta ki ke ta ti na muna kala la tu si sha ti ki na na mana la la ta ta ka ta. Te triono tu tu trak na ka e ki. Di da tu ki na la ki ta na mala na nu. Greetings to all of you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address a greater audience. For many, many years of your Earth years, I have been uh, tasked with supporting the vehicle on that earthly journey that she volunteered for. And we want to give you some background. So uh, we contacted many of our Andromedan uh, scientists and ask them if they are willing to do an experiment that could potentially accelerate the growth of the peoples on this planet Earth because when human beings were given the technology to, let's say, play with atomic weapons, we were concerned. And we wanted to, and this, when I say we, I speak primarily for the Andromedans, yet there is a family of brothers and sisters in space that many of you might or might not be aware of. And the councils came together and said, the children are lighting the playpen on fire. We need to do something. And the law of non-interference made it impossible for us to interfere. And so one thought up the idea what if we could use the physical adult vessel and bring about an energy exchange so that we have a higher consciousness in that vessel? And I personally am in charge of 250 of those. And then many other civilizations have done similar things. And maybe many of you are aware that you are currently living in the mediumic age, meaning there are many, many mediums. There are very many people that channel intelligence from different cosmic worlds. And all of them have one thing in common. They want to bring the consciousness of the peoples of this planet to a unity consciousness because 
unity consciousness is a prerequisite for your planet to become a full member of the League of Nations, the Galactic Federations of Star Traveling Peoples. Um, I'm using words that, or do my best to use words to, uh, that you can relate to. The, co- the greater community of star traveling nations. And as long as planet Earth is still preoccupied with shooting first and answering, asking questions later, we can unfortunately not uh, allow, and I'm saying again, we, your brothers and sisters from outer space, for many of your uh, attempts to go into cosmos to function and to to work. And uh, there are many of you on Earth who have researched and discovered that many of human beings' adventures into space have been observed Some of them, you might call, have been sabotaged. Some of them have been bent a little bit so that we could still adhere to universal law, yet humankind with ill intent could not do the damage that they might have intended to do. Um, We are just referring to some of the attempts to poke holes and create dimension uh, holes into the worlds and realms that you are not aware of. And so the planetary wars are actually a reflection of what has happened off-planet. Everything that is experienced on Earth has happened before, and that's why we, many, many, many years in our future, we could see that we would be very negatively impact, be impacted if we would not come and support the growth process that is happening on Earth. Earth humans have been seeded, of course, by entities of a different evolutionary stage. And even with that, there has been manipulations and and malevolent intervention. And you are now here together with you to bring humanity back to where it ought to have been many thousand years ago. And we are very, very excited to be given a mouthpiece, and of course that has been our intent all along, after the vehicle was done, gaining trust and confidence into the voice that she was hearing, which is I, Louis Mar, uh, that then in due time she would become confident enough to share her personal experiences with the world, and not just her, but many others as well. And then the songs of different voices from different continents and different experiences, earthly experience, they are walking that are university professors. They are walking that work in your transportation and communication system. They are walking in all facets of life. You won't know them. They are people that could be your friends, your neighbors, your mother, your sister, Uh, the person you're sitting next to on the bus or in your subway. But all of these people, by contract, brought in and anchored ever-increasing energy onto this planet. And these are the receptors, so to speak, where whenever there's a new wave of energy coming in, they get hit with it first. And I purposely say get hit with it because some of those experiences uh, can be painful. There are situations where this vehicle has headaches that the word headache will not describe. And she is being guided how to behave, what to do with her vessel, how to clean it up. The lower resonance of energies need to be cleansed. So naturally, there were things like colon cleansing. There were the body needed to be detoxified. Heavy metal detox needed to happen, and it's something that continuously mm-hmm. happens. Yet it enabled her to anchor that energy much better. Do you have any questions? Obviously, I could keep on talking. Yet I understand there is a time restriction we have. Is there anything you would like to ask, you would want us to elaborate on? 
Well, thank you for for all of that and 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 helping and and yes, to to any degree that that it would be helpful, uh, you know, to uh, uh, honor the law of non-interference without invitation. Please consider. Uh, Myself, Candy, Carol, and the others here on the Diamond Network, uh, uh, as as asking you and your fellow Andromedans to uh, to help and, and interfere in in all positive ways here on on Earth and 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 within Earth. Rest assured that your prayers have been answered, because there were many of you that ask for help. There were scientists who, once they have created what you call the atomic bomb, that say, we need help. Somebody, please help us. There were prayers sent. There were requests made. There were, much like our vehicle journal books, written full of requests for assistance. And it's that type of asking that then is registered on us. We have shared previously with a session where we had Tar and the vehicle together on the ship that all human thought is monitored. All action, all emotion, everything that is spoken is registered. It's a technology that humanity as of yet does not comprehend, even though we can now link you to or liken it to the understanding of cell phone recording or you have computers now that can record things. So it's not really too far a stretch maybe to believe that we have the ability to monitor what is going on in any part of the galaxy that we are put in charge of to assist on the level that is needed and the way we do meet you, we help you and assist you is by sending emissaries that are on the planet. They know who they are. They know what they're here to do. And one of these emissaries, may I refer to um, the retired foreign minister, a defense minister of Canada, Honorable Paul Hellyer, He's one of those people who work behind the scenes to bring about a new monetary system. The book, The Money Mafia, is something that flowed into this person, collaboration with many financial experts from different parts of the world. They are people that already have a plan on how to bring about the financial means to lift all the peoples of this planet out of starvation and poverty. So we are aware and we are working together with many, many councils and you can be assured that the light has won the battle. Absolutely. We are excited that the the currency war that started... uh, September 11th, 21, uh, has been won uh, this summer. In, and, and we are looking forward to a gold-backed currency being established soon, globally. Now, what we would like to stress at this point is it is important to understand that old programs are running out, much like the programs in our vehicle of self-doubt, of self-judgment, of self-criticism. And when we have these programs running, then we are not as effective as if we were not being encumbered by those. So be patient with yourself because all humans deal with these programming. They are not they are all the time, but they may pop up every now and then. So be loving and gentle with yourself and know that you created the path. It's not us that said this is how it's going. It's the sum of the souls of the people incarnate on this planet right now who made this 
path, who chose this journey. And all we are doing is, so to speak, the wind underneath your wings to help you fly a little higher, a little faster. But as soon as you put the brakes on, it stops. So when our vehicle does not want to communicate, we will not push ourselves on her. We send the invitation. We send the light for her to step into. And yet she hasn't stepped into it yet. Does that put your heart at ease a little bit? Okay. All right. Well, um, can you tell us... um, so on, on, on the surface, surface of the earth, the human species uh, apparently uh, some of us are uh, originally from Earth. Some are originally from many different planets throughout uh, this galaxy and perhaps others. And, and then some of us are walk-ins. Um, does that about summarize the the three different categories? Uh, and and if so, do you know any percentages of how many of us are originally from Earth and and other planets, and and then are just outright walk-ins? Now we we have to define the words we use because a human body is just a shirt. So in the third dimension, humanity seems to be stuck on figuring out where this body comes from. The body comes together from the soul essence, the star is born, your cosmic being. All of you are from somewhere else. Yet some people in their essence energy have more affinity with the earth, others are more um, connected to the, the space. Some people are more connected to your your nature being. Some people have more experiences and lifetimes as angelic beings. So allow us to help you let go of the concept of body. Who you are is a powerful cosmic vibration and energy that is occupying different vehicles at different times in space and dimensions simultaneously. So to grasp that multidimensionality better, let's liken it to a high-rise building. You can be on one floor with your physical body at a time. However, you can have awareness and you're conscious that you're in a high-rise building, in an apartment building, let's say with 100 floors, but you are currently on the third floor. Or you can choose to press the elevator button and to go to a different floor. And when you do make that choice, You can actually pull information from that particular point in time and space. So what is necessary for humanity to understand that what it means to be a human is not the body. It's what animates the body. Your computer, the shell, itself is a useless tool. What makes a computer a worthwhile instrument is the software that is loaded on it and how that software is connected to an, in a, within a network system. Does that make sense? Your computer can access different networks. You might need a password, you might to do something to connect your computer to that particular network, but the human being is exactly that. You are networked to many different worlds, 
And the question is, which world is more real? That which identifies solely with the body or that part of yourself that goes to sleep at night and yet you feel in your dreams you have experiences that are more real than your day-to-day waking conscious experience. So no, you are so much more. You are brilliant creatures. Yes, you travel, you came from outer space. All humans on planet Earth have come from outer space in their essence form. Then once the soul decides to take on embodiment, it brings mother and father together, and then the vehicle of that particular woman is used to bring forth the physical shirt, so to speak. Excellent, excellent uh, example. Well, is there something that you could uh, peer into the future and share with us? What what can we look forward to uh, around the time of our uh, fall equinox in in uh, September? of this year. You see, we do not exist in space and time as you do. Space and time is a third dimensional phenomenon. And when we say to you, there ought to have never been creation on the third dimension, the lowest dimension ought to be the fifth, you might understand that we cannot make predictions. What we can tell you that you are looking forward to is once you connect and you trust that software, that soul within, and you allow yourself to do what feels good rather than do that which your logical conditioned mind tells you you ought to be doing, you will have joy, you will have health, you will attract all that which you desire because then you are in your very own unique strength. You are in your own energy vortex which then accelerates your manifestation in an indescribable fashion. And all there is to do is to be joyful. Joyful like your little children when they are awaiting their birthday present or when they are awaiting the first day of school or kindergarten, get back to that childlike joy and happiness. And what will come, because now that the doors more or less have been opened and many people behind the scenes have been removing obstacles from you actualizing yourself, you will notice that more and more souls will be self-actualized, will be self-expressed. They are expressing the God-given gifts and talents they came here for. Permission will be given. And the systems of enslavement people believing that they need to go and spend their time doing something for somebody else just to make ends meet, this paradigm will come to an end. And that's where I think the biggest joy will be. This is where I, we see our instrument becoming more and more and more alive and joyous. And that's what we wish and see for all of you in not too long a future. Yes, that's wonderful. And, and that's, uh, you know, it's kind of silly, but a lot of humans, uh, uh, for example, and uh love chocolates and, and, and love sweet things and, 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 and it brings them a little bit of joy and, and that was the idea in, in naming our show, the Candy Shop Show, uh, to reinforce the idea that, that hey, let's have some more joy, uh, some more sweets in our lives and, and visualize the, the happy times and, and produce this happy, joyous uh, energy. Well, listen, my audience I, I, that are here tonight, I invite you to do a star six and come in and, and ask uh, our, our guests uh, any questions that you might wish to at this time. 
before we uh, uh, wrap it up this evening. Uh, would anyone like to have a, a question for uh, Mark or Hildegard or our uh, Andromedan friend? A question or comment? I know I've kind of surprised folks by, by having a, a a visitor from Andromeda tonight. Uh, of course, we have visitors in the past from Taitis and Sirius and and uh, so many uh, different galaxies have been represented in, in the beings that we've talked to. There is a time in your future when you are now accustomed to airplane landing when you will find spaceships next to them and you will be able to transfer into programs in different realms where you will be taught how to clean up your planet how to heal what needs healing, how to create a society where there is no more want, there's no more lack, where everybody is appreciated, where everybody is equal. You see, in higher dimensions, there are no leaders. We are equal, and everybody does, based on what they are enjoying, and based on the level of understanding they have gained, they take on the responsibility that they are able to carry. And yet it doesn't feel like a burdensome, bothersome responsibility, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. So what you understand from looking into your organizational structures or looking into your families, you will see there's always somebody mentoring somebody. There is the toddler in the playpen we referred to earlier. Then there is a level one society that would be the Pleiadian. They are 200 years ahead of planet Earth as far as when they reached unity consciousness and they reached that level one state. And so it's not surprising then that you have many helpers, many channelers, many mediums bringing information from the Pleiadians because they have done that step before you and they gladly take that responsibility to support you. And so then there were those who have them reach that level. And then population eventually has to catch up. Your education system will ever so slowly will change so that university students know about the basics. What is the information that I'm getting from um, my personal schooling because we shared earlier with Tar uh, that I had an education that lasted 250 of your Earth years. So I'm only 750 years of your Earth years old and I'm considered one who is a young one still and yet I am entrusted with the operation of the responsibility for 250 walk-in among other things because I have been involved with similar operations before, but nobody is in task with opportunities or responsibilities without there being somebody to mentor and to help them. And when you look at the planet Earth, why do children need parents? Why is it that some animals, and we're speaking specifically now about your animal kingdom, They are designed to give birth and their offspring don't need very much supervision or much education. Well, the human being needs that attention. And we are saying in Andromeda, the attention 
is more intense. The training goes beyond all fields of science, beyond everything. You cannot just learn about biology. You cannot learn about physics. You cannot learn just about economics. You cannot just let the politics be done by somebody else. Because every person in our society knows what everybody else knows. So the young people are educated and they know about the latest research, the latest challenges. This is all part and parcel of what it means to be uh, a member of our community. And in on earth, Everything has been fragmented. Young children, scientists, your elderly, not everybody knows what is really going on. And that's why you light workers are there to bring a new understanding. And it takes a great deal of courage. You've gone through a great deal of hardship. You don't fit in in your world the way some of you might have wanted to fit in. We know our vehicle on third day still considers herself weird. But get ready, weird is the new normal. And you are the ones who have to explain all of these things to people that are struggling, that are caught between worlds, so to speak. Shina kina lama tu, kita ta, kita mananamu, Iku si kila na shimani na langatu ika di na lama na ika di tika la muna kanatu. I want to say with these codings that there is a reason why everybody comes together, and I'm assuming, in fact, I could say I have a very strong knowing that the vehicle coming onto your show is facilitating help, especially for walk-ins, but also all those who would like to see a different perspective on what is happening in their lives. Because as that process now speeds up, there will be more and more of your friends in need for answers. And we would like to leave you with this thought that the vehicle is more than glad to answer questions as far as what did it feel like for her to be able to straddle the world of Andromeda and that that is having her be in a physical body bound by the physicality in a third dimensional world. Thank you, Tukta. For providing me with this opportunity, Shina Kanatu, Kitata, Kutala Manana. Itatro no o Kutuhunta Hai Teki I Chizutarata. And indeed, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to facilitate and bring uh, forward Luamar with Hildegard and to bring her forward onto your show, Candy, which has been uh, an amazing uh, time yeah. today and to be able to express and share. For your listeners, for yourself, it's uh, probably something new in this way. Um, however, you know, it, uh, it's a beautiful expression, and uh, it, the stories need to be told so people can come into the understanding of what's going on. Well, and the journey isn't over, you know. It's really interesting to see because I'm going out here on a territory where I haven't been before either. So it's a, it's a very interesting journey and I feel very privileged to have all of you be part of that because previously I didn't have that. I felt like I was the only person going through some strange experiences and then when the world around me didn't seem to understand much to the contrary, they seemed to turn totally hostile, I learned to just not say anything at all out of fear to, you know, not have my head chopped off. <laughs> well, you're among friends here on the Candy Shop Show, and, and we just love uh, 
love that you were able to come and 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 I and I and this experiment really was was very successful I feel and uh, would love uh, to have you back again uh Hildegard and and your friends that would be wonderful thank you so much one of the topics that I've been learning about is the divine feminine because yes. what I've been hearing is that many women have challenges embracing their femininity. And I know the Andromedans have a lot to say about that because from a cosmic perspective, um, and there's a gentleman who wrote this book, The, um, the Revelatorium, revelatorium.org, explains how, from a cosmic perspective, there is a feminine, a male, and there is a, the universal spark, if I may simplify it that way. And that doesn't mean when I say feminine or male, it has nothing to do with our physicality. These are just charges, vibe, energies. And when you understand how the human body um, embodies that cosmic feminine, so to speak, and then the male represents the idea, the inspiration, and then the woman needs to nurture, whether it is a child, another life, or an idea, a business concept, um, that is really, really fascinating for me to see how this is all going to evolve, because as we go into the age of Aquarius, Aquarius apparently is all about bringing the feminine and the masculine in harmony within each, all of us. But apparently the, the women, the people that are now carrying the female body in this time, they seem to have a great role to play. And I'm not quite sure what that looks like. But that's what I've been given so far. And I find that very fascinating. And then Mark introduced me to a wonderful gentleman his name is Glenn, and he spoke at that conference um, that we were a couple of weeks ago in Brantford, Ontario, and he seems to be doing research into that, and I found it very, very interesting how he worded it. I, I'm, I don't have the words to even explain it, so maybe that would be a very interesting person to talk to as well in one of your Oh, that shows. would be excellent. Well, uh, Mark, and I know Mark, you can connect him, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know Glenn very well. Uh, Mark, can can you or you and your friends uh, come back to the candy shop show in two weeks from tonight? Well, I believe I can make it, and Hildegard, uh, you know, we can check with you, and I can also yeah. check with Glenn and see if he's available at all any time, and we can be in touch. Okay. That sounds great. That sounds great. Um, Thank well, you so much for giving me a candy out of your candy jar. I just love that concept. And when you were talking earlier, I just go, wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It was so nice to meet you this way. Oh, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, I have uh, fond memories of, of, of visits to uh, Toronto, and I feel that I've been uh, uh, on the spaceships uh, at night time and uh, it's just it's just great. Well, uh I appreciate you all uh and uh I I just um in in visualizing the best as as we all unite for a, a wonderful uh upgrade in our computer programming and have blessings from that. And so uh, I I'll, I'll say good night and and uh Thank, thank you, Mark and 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 Hildegard for for everything. Yes, and thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be on your show once again, and I look forward to being on it again. Thank you. Good night. It's a wrap. Night. Thank you. Good night.
you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.